<coughs> um, hello, hello, check, check, is this thing on? I hope this thing is on, because I'm going to talk into it anyway. All right, so today we're talking about some similar right triangles. Okay, um, similar right triangles, and we can read, of course, you'll know what similar means and be able to use proportions. Okay, and this is the key to all similar right triangles, is that the angles are equal and the sides are in proportions. Okay, so we're going to set up some proportions and solve. Remember, proportions are simply equal ratios. So a proportion is an two equal ratios. And ratios are simply comparisons of two different things. So we're going to have like A over B equals C over D. Okay, two equal fractions. And of course, we're going to solve these things by cross multiplying. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get into the next slide and see what we got. Okay, so similar, when shapes are similar, their sides are proportional and all of their angles are the same. Okay, so what's key here is that these shapes are the exact same, only they are different sizes. So we have like a large right triangle and a smaller right triangle where all of the angles are the same. Okay, angles are the same, sides are in proportion. Like maybe this thing is twice as big as that thing. Or um, this thing is one-fifth as large as the other thing. <clears throat> but shapes are the exact same. Angles are the same. Shapes are similar. Similar shapes mean we have proportional sides. Okay, something is two times as big. Sometimes we can find a scale factor that relates one triangle to the other triangle so that we see how much larger is everything over there compared with over here. If it's like a one to three ratio, then everything over there is three times as large as everything over here. So we're gonna do lots of things to figure this stuff out. Okay, so let's see, here is your symbol for similarity. It's the squiggly, sometimes called the tilde. And uh, if we notice uh, the way that the letters are matched up, we have either a green relationship or a red relationship. So if we see A goes with X, it looks like B goes with Y and C goes with Z. So the order of the letters matters. Let's see, A goes with X, check, B, Y, C, Z. So it looks like this green thing is the correct one and the black, or rather the red, is the incorrectly written. Okay, the red one is wrong, so the green one is the one that's correct. This is how we should write it. Okay, also then, side side AB corresponds with side XZ. Okay, these are your proportional sides. Side uh, AB is proportional, let me make that pink, sorry. Side AB is proportional to side YX. Okay, these ones are in proportion. And lastly, uh, the third side BC is in proportion to YZ. We can set up these proportions based upon our similarity statement over here. Okay, and of course, we can use them to solve things. So let's move on and actually do some solving. Oh, before we solve, let's talk about cross multiplying. Okay, so we cross multiply. When two fractions are equal, that means their cross products have to be equal. So 1 times x should be the same thing as 2 times 3, which means x needs to be 6. In order for this proportion to be equal, 1 over 2, 3 over something needs to be equal to 1 over 2, so that something has to be 6. Okay, likewise over here, to solve this one, we need to cross multiply. 4 times 9 needs to be equal to x times itself. So 36 equals x squared and we solve a square by square rooting. And in geometry, we only use the positive. So that means in this case, x has to be six also. So four over six, that's the same reduced fraction as six to nine. Okay, two thirds, two thirds, so six has to be your answer right there. And this is a really special type of cross multiplication which we'll talk about later. So here are some more examples. We need to cross multiply any time we have one fraction equals another fraction. So a nice little review of some algebra skills also. 5 times x minus 8 needs to equal 6 times x plus 2. 
what value of x makes this true? Okay, so we do this, uh, we have to distribute and do all of our fabulous stuff, uh, by the way. So if you want to, you can always pause the video at any time we're doing this algebra, do it on your own, and then start the video up again and see if you have done your algebra correctly. Or if I made a mistake somewhere and you need to let me know on the comment page. So let's see, minus 5x from both sides, 6 minus 5 is 1, subtract the 12 from both sides, um, minus 40 minus this is minus 52. So it looks like negative 52 will be the value of x that makes these two proportions equal. Okay, so one last time, this is a good review of your algebra stuff. Cross multiplying here, let me change colors just for fun. So we have x times 3x minus 3 equals x plus 2 times 2x minus 2. Okay, like I said, if you want to pause the video now, do all of your algebra, get an answer, and then we'll come back and see if it works. So I'm going to continue. Here we have to distribute 3x squared minus 3x. Over here, I'm going to distribute into both of these. So the x times is by both of them. The 2 also multiplies by both of them. So 2x squared minus 2x plus 4x minus 4. Now I'll combine my like terms over here in a second. So 3x squared minus 3x on the left. And of course on the right, 2x squared. Uh, this is a plus 2x minus 4. So what to do now? We have an x squared term, an x term, an x squared, an x, and a numerical term. It looks like we're going to end up needing to make a quadratic. So I'm going to bring my 2x over to this side, minus 2x squared, which is 1x squared. I'll subtract my 2x also, minus 3, minus 2, that's minus 5x's. And now I'm going to bring my minus 4 over so that I have a quadratic. Okay, anytime you have an x squared and x and a numerical term in your problem, you should get them all on one side as a quadratic. Okay, because there's lots of ways to solve this quadratic, one of which is by factoring. So we need to think what numbers multiply to give you positive 4, and at the same time add to give negative 5, and hopefully you're knowing them as negative 1 and negative 4. Okay, you multiply these together, they get 4, you add them, you get minus 5. So we can now write this in factored form as x minus 4 and x minus 1 equals 0. And if you've done enough of these, the x minus 4 factor, what number minus 4 equals 0? Well, that number is positive 4. And what number minus 1 equals 0? That number is positive 1. So your answers are going to always be opposite of your factors. So we have a negative 4 factor, you have a positive 4 answer. We have a negative 1 factor, we have a positive 1 answer. Okay, so now let's check. Is 4 okay? Yes, 4 over 6 is um, the same thing as 2 over 3. That's good. Uh, 1, 1 over 3 is the same thing as 2 minus 2, 0. No. Okay, so we need to check this. When we check this answer, when we plug it back in, we find out that 1 is not a viable solution. Okay, 1 over 3 on this side, right? 1 over 1 plus 2 is 1 third. 2 times 1 is 2, gives us a 0 over 3 times 1 is 3, a 0. Notice these two fractions are not the same, so 1 is not going to be a potential answer. Okay, 4 works fine, 1 does not. So in this case, x equals 4 is your only answer. All right, so now let's get on to some geometry. Let's find some missing sides. So here we're told that these two triangles are similar. So we know that the sides are in proportion. So once again, we have side AC is in proportion to side XZ. Those things should have the same ratio. AB should be in proportion to XY. They should have the same ratio and BC is in proportion to YZ. Okay. So now we need to figure out what our similarity or your scale factor is. So let's do that. 
To figure out what the scale factor is, we need to find two values or two sides that have the same numbers. So if we notice, AC is the number 8 and XZ is the number 24. So to figure out what our scale factor is, we'll do small triangle over large triangle. So we have 8 to 24, that can reduce to 1, 2, 3. So we basically have a scale factor of 1 to 3. And this is what we're going to use to set up our ratios to find everything else. So every one unit over here corresponds with three units of length over there. So let's figure out, some, oh, here we have an xy of 21. So we set up our proportion. 1 over 3 is in proportion to um, 21 goes with AB. So side AB over 21. Okay, small triangles on top, big triangles on bottom. 1 to 3 is in proportion to side AB over 21. So 3 ABs equals 21 when we cross multiply. So that means that AB has to be 7 units long. So an AB of 7. So our other missing side is YZ. So let's set up our other proportion. We still have a 1 to 3 ratio, reduced scale factor. That needs to equal 10 from this triangle, 10 from the small triangle, and YZ on the larger triangle. So this is our variable. This is the thing we're trying to solve for. So we cross multiply YZ times 1 and 3 times 10. We get that YZ needs to be 30 units long. Okay, Pretty easy to do once you know what the scale factor is. So let's do another problem. Here we have our proportional sides. Everything is similar, so our sides are in proportion. Once again, AC corresponds with XZ. BAB corresponds with XY. And BC corresponds with YZ. I wanted to change that to blue. Change to blue. Okay, now it's blue. BC corresponds with YZ. So in order to find out what our scale factor is, we need to find two values that have numbers. So we notice, hopefully you notice, that side AB has a 10 and its corresponding side XY is 50. So if we do 50 under 10, we do small triangle on top, since these correspond, they're going to be in proportion. We figure out that we have a 1 to 5 scale factor. For every 1 unit of length over triangle ABC, we get 5 units of length on triangle XYZ. So these things are 5 times as large as those things are. So if that is true, and this is a side of 15, then side AC so 1 over 5 needs to be in proportion to AC over 15. Hopefully we can quickly see that AC has to be 3 units long. Okay, When we cross multiply, 5 times this equals 15, so 5 times 3 equals that. Okay, Similarly to find our other side, YZ. So here we're missing YZ again. We can set up our proportion. 1 over 5 is in proportion to 12 over YZ. Okay, this is your scale factor, so 1 fifth. We can cross multiply and YZ equals 60 units long because 5 times 12 is 60. Okay, pretty nice. Anytime you have similar figures, your sides are in proportion, so you figure out how much larger they are and then you can easily set up and solve this. Now, here we have another one, but now we have no picture. Okay, what to do? Well, don't fret. We still have our letters, so we can decipher what our proportions are. So the first two letters of this triangle go with the first two letters of that triangle. So JK over TU will be in proportion to the second two letters, KL over UV will be in proportion to 
JL over TV. Okay, because of the way this lines up, you can draw your triangles if you want to, just like before, and put your letters on there to get your corresponding sides. Or we can just take it from the letters here. The first two make a segment, the first two make a segment. The second two make a segment, and the second two make a segment. The first and the third make a segment, and so on and so forth. So now that we have your ratios written down, we can plug in our values. We have JK is 10, um, KL is 15, UT is 30, so UT and TU are the same, TV is 33. So hopefully you can see exactly what your scale factor is. It looks like it's a 1 to 3 scale factor. Triangle TUV is 3 times as large as triangle JKL. Which means if there's 15 units on top, 3 times 15 is 45. So UV has to be 45 units long as the side length. And if this one is 33, and this is one third, that means JL has to be 11. So 11 over 33 reduces to 1 over 3. 15 over 45 reduces to 1 over 3. So all of these are in proportion. Good, and your triangles are similar. <coughs> okay, lastly, here we have, oh, maybe it's not lastly. No, it's lastly. Here we have some more, but you still have your proportions. So we can set up your ratios right away. Um, the first two letters, AB over TR is in proportion to BC over RS. These fractions will reduce just like before. Is in proportion to AC over TS. That's a C. So first we write down your ratios based upon your similar triangles. Okay, what sides will correspond? Now we can fill in with the things that we're given, AB is X plus 2, BC is X plus 1, AC is 5, TR is 3X minus 1, RS is 2X plus 2, and TS is something that we need to find here. We want to find the length of TS, so we don't know that. And you want to find the value for X. Okay, so once again we have some algebra to do here. So let's do our algebra. We always start solving a proportion by cross multiplying. So let's take a minute. If you want to pause it and try your algebra, by all means pause the video and try your algebra. Okay, if you want to watch along and then do it later, that's fine also. Okay, the key is that you are able to try this and figure it out on your own. Okay, it's just a video that is informative. It's not meant to be the solve all be all. So when we do this, we get a reduced uh, combined like term trinomial of x squared plus 6x plus 4. Right here's um, 2x's plus 4x's is 6x's. Same thing over here, we'll distribute twice and combine like terms. So I get a 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 as my trinomial when you combine like terms. So we have an x squared, an x, and a number. I'm going to make everything into a quadratic. Okay, Subtract all of this stuff from here. Minus 2x squared minus 6x minus 4. Okay, Move everything on to one side of your equal sign so we can solve this quadratic x squared minus 4x minus 5. So once again, let's figure out what numbers multiply to give us minus 5 and add to give minus 4, or negative 5 if you will. So negative 5 and negative 4, it looks like I have multipliers of negative 5 and positive 1. These two multiply to give you the top, these two add to give you the bottom. So my factors are x minus 5 and x plus 1. So our solutions, therefore, are going to be what number minus 5 equals 0? So that should be positive 5. And what number plus 1 equals 0? That is negative 1. And because this is geometry, we don't want to have a side length of 0 or a negative side length. 
So we throw away our negative answer and you keep x as positive 5. Okay, we found x. We found the value for x. Now let's do our other stuff. What else do we have to do? We have to solve for ts. So let's put some values in here. If x is 5, that means this is 6. Right, 5 plus 1 is 6. If x is 5, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. So I have a side length of 6 and a side length of 12. Okay, 6 over 12 reduces to hopefully, you know, 1 over 2. So the bottom portion, the bottom triangle, triangle TRS, is 2 times as large as triangle ABC. That means if I have a side of 10, 5, I have a TS side of 10. Okay, because this reduces to 1 half, the bottom has to be twice as big as the top. So we have just found the value for TS. Okay, remember, similar triangles means you have proportional sides. So you find out what sides correspond, you make your ratios, okay, cross multiply, solve for x if you have to, or simply um, solve for the value of the variable. Okay, hopefully this has been informative and you understand a little bit more about similar triangles than you did before. See you later.